Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making a shipwreck skillet casserole. Now what we need to start with is a pound of ground beef. And I've got it over here in my pan. I'm gonna get it turned on so we can get it cooking. And um, we'll talk about what else is in this. I'm just gonna start by seasoning it with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. This is a good place to add a chopped up onion if you've got one and you wanna put it in there or maybe some chopped up peppers, some hot peppers or bell peppers or just, you know, whatever you wanna to use to season your ground beef with. You can literally put just about anything in this. Now, shipwreck, casseroles, uh, stews, meals, there's a million varieties of this, and I think it gets its name because you can kind of throw what you've got in it. I mean, we're a little bit shipwrecked right now. We kind of got to use what we've got. So I'm going to go over the stuff that you sort of have to have in this and then give you some substitutes. You need some tomatoes in this. Now, I have one can of diced tomatoes with the juice in them. Don't drain the juice. If you want to use fresh tomatoes, you can certainly use fresh tomatoes. If you've got some in your freezer, if you've got a half a jar of leftover spaghetti sauce, you could use that in this and it would give it a lot of seasoning and you know, you wouldn't have to add anything, any other spices or anything like that to it. And I know when my kids were growing up, a lot of times I had leftover spaghetti sauce and um, now that it, I'm not cooking for a crowd, I've always got leftover spaghetti sauce. So use that in this. This is a really good recipe for leftovers. That's kind of where it gets its name. And you need some vegetables in it. Now these can be fresh, canned, frozen, and use vegetables you like. But this recipe has a cup of peas and a cup of corn. I'm using frozen, but you could also use one can. Just drain the juice off of them if you're using canned. If you've got fresh, use fresh. You need a cup of milk. Um, any milk will work. Uh, I wouldn't use heavy cream because it would be too thick in this, but any kind of regular milk will work. Skim, half and half, whole, whatever you got. Uh, if you have a cup of shredded cheese, add it to this. And any flavor you like will work. You don't have to. Now, most shipwreck casseroles have either pasta or have either rice or potatoes in them. They usually don't have pasta in them. It's usually rice or potatoes because those are things that have long-term storage and can be carried. But what we're gonna use in this is a box of macaroni and cheese. Any macaroni and cheese will work. And if you happen to have a box of that with the ready cheese stuff, it is a little bit better. I mean, the pasta is a little better in it and the cheese sauce is a little better in it. But anything all the way from this original stuff up to the box stuff, you can use organic. Buy this stuff when it's on sale. Um, you can save a lot of money and then you've got it for quick dinners. Now, when you're making this, how far you have to make your hamburger beat stretch, how many people you have to feed with it, is kind of going to determine how much you bust it up. Um, if you are only feeding maybe four people with this pound of ground beef, you can leave the ground beef in some bigger chunks. But if you've got to add more vegetables, maybe you've got to use a pound of ground beef with two boxes of macaroni it's because you have to feed more people, bust the ground beef up into smaller pieces. If you bust it up into smaller pieces, it will distribute through the meal easier and it will you know, it'll still be plenty enough to season the dish and it'll be enough to satisfy everybody who has eaten it. Now, something else about the ground beef. Um, if you drain it and take some of the fat off, of course that will reduce the fat. It will also reduce the calories. But if you need to feed 10 people 
with a pound of ground beef, don't drain this. Leave the fat in there because the fat is what fills you up. And use two boxes of pasta, double your vegetables, double your milk, double your everything else. And you can make this feed I 10 people with a pound of ground beef, just double the vegetables. And I know how tight money's getting and how expensive food's getting. And I know we're gonna have to start stretching everything we get more, stretching our budgets more. And I know we've already started doing it. But um, busting the hamburger up in smaller pieces will make it go farther. And as long as everybody gets some, they're gonna be okay with it. Now, according to the new FDA guidelines, they say a serving of meat is only two ounces. So according to FDA guide guidelines, a 16 ounce pound of ground beef should feed eight people. So if you need to feed your whole family with one pound of ground beef, use it as a seasoning more than as the main course. And when I was growing up, a lot of times, that's the only way we got meat. It was a seasoning. It was something that was added to beans or added to something like this skillet meal. And it was just part of the flavor more than the main part of the dish. If you're worried about protein, you need more protein in it, you can add a can of some kind of beans in this. Just any kind you like, northern beans, kidney beans, or whatever. If you've got some leftover beans, dump them in here. If you've got a little leftover chili, not enough to feed everybody, add it to this. And it will, it'll blend in just fine. It'll add to the flavor. It'll add to the seasoning, so you won't have to add as many spices. Basically, anything you've got left over, just about, you can add into this dinner. And it's a quick weeknight meal. Um, I really like the shells in this a little bit better. Yep, and I've got some shells here, so I'm going to use this shell pasta instead of the regular stuff. Um, I've also got the white cheddar annies here, and the organic stuff is pretty good. I like it. This is Charlotte's favorite, the annies in a purple box with the seashells. <laughs> but buy it on sale. I mean, grocery store sales are going to be like your best friend through the next who knows how long. <laughs> And buy extra as much as you can when you find stuff like this that's shelf stable on sale. Okay, I'm gonna take just a little bit of the fat out of mine, not all of it, because the fat not only adds calories and fills you up, it also adds flavor, but there's a little bit more in here than I need. And it would also depend on your diet too, if you're if you've been warned about cholesterol, you definitely want to get some of that fat out of it. All right, my ground beef is about done there, so I'm going to go ahead and add in my cheese sauce. And kind of stir that in. And I'm going to add in my pasta. And my tomatoes. And my milk, the juice from the tomatoes and the milk are going to cook my pasta. Now, once you get this kind of boiling and you get ready to put the lid on it, you are going to turn it down on low. If you don't, your milk is going to scorch and it's going to burn and it's just going to make a big old mess. So you don't want to do that. And you can bake this in the oven if you want to. Go ahead and stir in these froze peas. And my corn. You can wait a while to add the corn if you're using canned or fresh because if you boil it the whole time it takes to boil the pasta, then your corn's gonna be a little bit tough. But because this is frozen and it does need to cook just a little while, I'm gonna go ahead and dump it in there. All right, and now all we're going to do is cover it, 
keep an eye on it. We'll maybe stir it a time or two and put a lid on it. Turn it down. And you want to cook it about as long as what your box says. Um, let's see. This box says nine minutes. It might take a little bit longer than that because it's cooking in the milk and the tomato juice and sometimes pasta doesn't soak up stuff like the milk and the tomato juice quite as quick as it would water and you might even have to adjust the moisture in it and add just a tiny bit of water to keep it from burning that's why we're going to stir it after a couple minutes so let's just keep an eye on it turn it down make sure it stays boiling but it doesn't stick Okay, it's cooking up just fine. I'm not having any signs of sticking or drying out just yet. I did get me about half a cup of water here to have it ready in case I need it. And you can see how pretty this dish is with the corn and the peas and the tomatoes. Almost looks like Christmas time. <laughs> Should have done this one in July for our Christmas in July video. <laughs> Just kind of keep it covered there and we're going to let it boil a couple more minutes. Charlotte just took her big motorcycle trip and she got to go to Yellowstone and she brought me back a bear paw pot holder. <laughs> While we're waiting on this to cook, I want to share Colossians 3.15 with you. And let the peace of God rule your hearts, to which ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. I know with all this stuff that's going on, all the shortages and the inflation and all that stuff, that it is very hard to maintain that peace of God in your heart. But God is still in control of this, no matter what's going on. And He's still working all things for the good of them who love Him and are called by His name. So don't forget that. And I also know that the harder things get, the harder it seems to be thankful. Just remember, though, that your blessings and your peace are not of this world. And we have so much to be thankful for. When it gets tough, when times get hard, that's when we see the things that we are really blessed with. It's not material stuff, and it's not, I guess, easy things. It's the people who love us. It's a roof over our head. And if you have a roof over your head, you truly have a great deal to be thankful for. Because not everybody does. And I'm not just talking about not everybody in the world. I'm talking about not everybody who lives around us does. So if you have at least one person in your life who cares about you and you have a roof over your head, you have more blessings to count than you can even comprehend. And if you add on top of that a God who loved you so much that he died to save you, you are certainly beyond blessed, as am I. So remember, no matter how hard it gets, let that peace of God rule your heart and count all your blessings when it gets tough because that will make you grateful. Now is a good time to add some spices to this if you wanna add some spices. And you can season this pretty much any way you want to. If you want to add something to give it a little heat, some hot pepper, some chili powder, or just leave it kind of basic, that's fine too. A little Italian seasoning would work in here. Like I said, you can use leftover spaghetti sauce in it if you want to. Um, I'm going to add just a little bit of this right here. It's a red spice and it, it's got a little bit of heat to it. It's some peppers. Um, I got it in some packages that I get from Israel every so often. And they just have different stuff that comes in them. Usually some kind of food, spices, um, maybe some sort of a side dish or something, some kind of snack. 
uh, nuts or fruit but I'll put a link to those in there because the stuff that comes in them is very interesting and I like getting the stuff like that from Israel it's a good way to support their economy too and if y'all are interested in that you can order individual items or you can get um, the boxes once a month or I think you can sign up to get them like every three months but anyway they are kind of fun um, I don't see me being able to afford a trip to Israel anytime soon and that's kind of a way to I don't know get a little bit of the culture anyway I guess check my pasta again here mmm okay it's done and that added just a little bit of flavor to it without having to add to any more salt the only salt I put in this was a little bit in the meat um, if you want more salt in it of course you can certainly add it but the macaroni and cheese mix does have salt in it so if you're using some kind of box macaroni and cheese keep in mind it does have salt in it you might want a little bit more for the pasta and stuff but that's up to you I would just set it on the table and let people who want more add more I'm gonna add about half of my cheese here and stir it in and then I'm gonna put the other half of it on the top and actually I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off because it's done and I don't want it to stick now I've cooked it all and it looks good it's um, not too runny so it's gonna be like a casserole you know and not run everywhere especially once it sets for just a minute so I don't want to burn it at the end <laughs> if you're cooking this in a cast iron skillet you will want to cut the heat off here if you are cooking it um, on a glass top stove you will probably want to cut the heat off here because they hold a lot of heat and just leave the pan sitting on the stove while you add the cheese and stir it in and melt it and stuff okay now I'm gonna kind of spread it out there so it's like a casserole and I'm gonna add my the rest of my cheese here to the top of it and you can put this in the oven if you want to and brown it like it's August right now so I don't think I want to turn my oven on to brown it because it will melt just fine here no need to heat the house up that much and this is a really quick weeknight dinner you can have this on the table because you're not really cutting anything up in 20 minutes you got the kids doing ball practice or band or maybe going to church on a Wednesday night or something and you don't have time to cook this is a good one because it's fast it said 20 minutes and you can have it on the table I didn't need to add any more of that water um, just the milk and what was in the tomatoes cooked my pasta just fine okay Ugh, that's it let's see what this looks like here yep cheese is melted and I got a little spot there I could have let it go a little bit longer but you can see how quick this is it is very pretty it is very easy you don't have to cut anything or dice anything you literally just brown the ground beef and throw everything in the pan now what I do a lot of times is I will buy big packages of ground beef when it's on sale and cook it lightly season it and cook it maybe cut some onions up in it maybe not maybe just a little bit of salt and pepper and cook it and then I divide it up after it's cooked and put it in my freezer and when I need a quick meal I got it quick I can thaw that out in the microwave or throw it in the pan and thaw it out but it's already browned so you're starting halfway done with the meal and you can buy the ground beef when it's on sale and that saves you a lot of money so that's kind of my money saving tip for this video buy it when it's on sale pre-cook it it'll save you a lot of time and a lot of money I want to thank you all so much for joining us in the hillbilly kitchen we're probably gonna do a few more shipwreck casseroles and stuff do some with pasta and rice because this is a good recipe to throw stuff in and substitute if you haven't already please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave us and until next time remember to put God first <music>